Hello and welcome. This is the walkthrough of our project 9 and 10 project. Uh, we're going to do the Vesuvius Inc. Uh, detection challenge on Kaggle uh, to learn a little bit more about convolutional neural networks, especially generative ones uh, here. So the first thing you're going to want to do is join this Kaggle Inc. Uh, Vesuvius Inc. detection challenge. So go to there and log in uh, if you're not automatically logged in and then here you should be able to join the challenge uh, for that so you need to join the challenge so you can access it and we're going to run our notebooks inside kaggle here rather than inside google colab like we have in the past so once you've joined the challenge um, i have a starting notebook for you to work with so open up this cis 3115 UNet notebook uh, here. Um, and once you open up that, you'll uh, have this notebook here uh, that you can view. But you're, what you're going to do to run it, you've got to go into edit mode. So hit edit here, and it'll switch you into kind of a um, the edit mode, which will look just like Colab. It'll be a normal Jupyter notebook for that. So. Um, so again, here's our um, the the notebook uh, that you go through. You go through and run this. I'll walk you through it. Um, and again, there's a link then to the write up that you have to choose, do. Here's our project ten write up uh, here. Uh, so go ahead and you do this. So first thing we want to do is just describe the Vesuvius inkjet challenge, inkjet ink detection challenge. Uh, here. So again, you can read more about it uh, in that link uh, there. Um, then I want you just to watch this tutorial, uh, ink detection tutorial. Uh, just go through some of the materials here uh, and watch some of this to try to detect some of this um, challenge that we're working with here. And uh, just like we normally do in some of our other write-ups, uh, just something new, something old, you know, something we already learned new from this, a uh, quote from it, and a question that was raised by this. And then uh, much of this code actually comes from another notebook out there. And so I want you to go read the original notebook uh, and um, just uh, look through that and see what you think of that and make a little description of that um, here. Uh, okay, so that's the first part. Now we're going to look at uh, two different formats. Let me jump into this notebook here. I'm going to jump in this view. This is not the edited view. This is the other view here. Um, so uh, we do a setup like we do in almost all of our notebooks here. We do some uh, loading of the data for this. Um, now what we are given is a couple different views of this data. Um, for um, our output, we want to generate uh, uh, the actual ink detection. So this is our ink labels. This is our black and white image. This is what we want to help. But this mask just shows uh, in the image where we will want to actually do the detections uh, here and where we won't uh, here. Um, there are actually three different uh, fragments uh, that we're trying to try to detect. So in this notebook, what uh, the author does is concatenate all three of these together into one larger image and resize them down a little bit. So here's all three images or fragments uh, put together into one uh, resized uh, fry, or you know image. And then what we're going to do is sample uh, from that image. Before we do that, we're going to um, reserve an area for validation. So we're going to have, this is all training data, so we're going to reserve a section here for our validation uh, data. So this will be our validation area here uh, for us. Um, so, um, and so we won't be training with that, we'll just be doing that. So this kind of sets up that. And I'm not going to walk through all this Python code so much. Um, just kind of explain what it does. So what we're going to do then is when we're training, we're going to 
pick random 64-bit uh, by 64, 64 pixel by 64 pixel squares in our image, and the little red uh, squares show some samples. We're just going to randomly sample from our image and train on those these random uh, locations on our image, on our big, huge image here. But we're going to avoid, we won't sample anywhere in our validation area. Uh, so this was this is what this does is to extract those samples and those labels uh, here, um, and then we also do the same thing for the validation area. We will we'll create some validation patches. So again, here are some validation patches again just from that validation area uh, that we're working with. And we're grabbing some patches from that uh, for that. So again, we're grab so we'll have a set of validation. Uh, patches or ran and randomly drawn and in this set of um, training patches. And again, we can generate, the system is set up to generate as many of these as we want uh, for our system. So Now we're going to want to see how accurate we are for this. So we're going to, uh, this computes a baseline prediction. So since the image is largely uh, empty, not, you know, uh, a lot of the places will have no ink in them. Uh, the, the kind of baseline prediction is just to predict for no ink anywhere. So if you predict for no ink anywhere, you get a surprisingly good result here. You get a 78% accuracy. So our goal is we've got to make sure whatever system we have is built is um, beating that 78% accuracy. So just keep that in mind when we're training this uh, for that. Okay, so now part three is when we're actually defining our model uh, for this. So again, this kind of shows our input rather than a single image is uh, much uh, many layers of the image uh, that is scanned in a 3D scan, you know, x-ray stuff. So we actually have multiple uh, layers. And again, we've seen this before with RGB uh, inputs where we'd have three layers. But here, I think we're uh, in this notebook, we're doing 16 layers, although we can go up to, I think, 64 layers with this input stuff. So we're randomly selecting areas or feeding or, you know, little volumes from this, feeding it through our network, and then trying to compare that to what our output should be uh, here. So we're going to look at two different notebooks or um, models here. One is called the basic encoder decoder model uh, here. That takes an image and feeds it through a set of convolutional neural networks. And again, these are just like our normal convolutional neural networks we've seen below before. We have convolutional layers. Um, and then we'll have uh, max pooling layers to shrink these things down. And we'll have more convolutional layers, more max pooling, convolutional max pooling uh, layers here. So we'll uh, shrink this image down to a, uh, a set of features, core features, uh, which will kind of encode the meaning of this image. And then from that, we'll um, do the opposite. We'll build up. Now, this is what we haven't seen before. So again, we'll have convolutional layers, but then we'll have kind of this inverse of the max pooling uh, layers here, these inverse layers, which will build it up higher and higher back to the original size. So our original, our output then will be an image the same size as our input. Now, this mod, this type of model is used a lot for what we call like image segmentation. If we have an image and we're going to want to learn to draw around certain parts of that image uh, here, so like a I, this I think is x-rays identifying bones or something like that out of from this paper here um, but we're going to take our image and it'll be actually multiple layers and then but we're going to predict one layer which is the ink output layer uh, here so again we take multiple layers input and then we're just trying to predict one uh, layers output for that um, so here's the defin uh, def yeah where we're defining this uh, we're starting with 64 by 64 bit uh, or pixel images, doing some convolutional layers, doing max pooling, doing some more convolution max pooling, more convolution max pooling, and then we so have some internal representation. And then this is this convolutional 2D transpose. So this is like the opposite of a max pooling layer. This will make the image bigger, convolutional, make it bigger, convolutional, make it bigger. So now we're back up to 64 by 64 image uh, at this point for it. Uh, so that model is called our encoder decoder model. And you can see how it takes the image, shrinks it down to an encoded size, and then builds that image back up to the original size. 
Now, since this original work on encoder-decoder models, um, there was a new model uh, presented that's called UNET, which does similar. Again, we do some convolutional layer, max pooling, convolutional layer, max pooling, convolutional layer, max pooling, until we have some internal representation and we upsample, and then convolutional upsample, convolutional upsample, convolutional. So this is, again, this sort of layer is the encoder, the same sort of encoder decoder layers we've seen, but we're going to add some uh, special connections in here. So from our 64 uh, by 64 pixel image, we're going to send that over to this 64 by 64 image. So we're going to have this look at two things not only look at the upsampled version of this but also look at the original 64 by 64 image concatenate th those both together and then generate some up thing and again at the 32 bit or pixel by 32 pixel layer we're going to look at um, both the upsampled uh, version of that uh, and concatenate that with the actual original uh, 32 pixel by 32 pixel uh, representation here. Uh, so this convolutional layer will look at both of those uh, and build it. Um, so sometimes we, there's different names for this kind of uh, connection here. Uh, if, if you've worked with residue networks, you may remember those before where they have these skip connections. These, some people kind of talk about these as residue connections. They're not really that, but again, they're uh, some sort of shortcut connections that'll bring the data right from the original source over for that. So here's a version of that. This is called the UNET model. So we start with our input. We do a couple convolutional layers, max pooling, convolutional max pooling, convolutional max pooling, and our middle layer here. So this is exactly like we've had before. Um, and now it's a little different though. We do our uh, convolutional 2D, our you know, upsampling to make the image bigger. But here's where we do our concatenation. And we concatenate not only this image, but we also add convolution, this layer here. Uh, in here. We concatenate both those layers together and then do some convolutional layers. Now, same with the next layer. So that was our 16 pixel by 16 pixel, a 32 pixel by six, 32 pixel. Again, we do some con uh, our upsampling and then that result we concatenate with our convolutional layer from layer 2 here. That's our 32. So again, that's this line here. This concatenation is getting our up uh, scaled image, and then also a copy of that concatenated them together, sending it to input for this layer. So that's the only difference here is these concatenation layers here that build this network. So um, now the actual model, I wanted to do this simplified version so you can see it. The actual model is a little more complicated in here, and here's the original code from our notebook uh, here. So F Chalet had a different version of this, um, sets it up and just uses loops uh, here to loop through uh, some different layers and uh, does that. So does our uh, convolutional layer, but adds some batch normalization here. And so batch normalization is, um, we haven't gotten too much into it, but is a way of normalizing the inputs and is commonly used uh, in these uh, types of networks. Uh, so we do some batch normalizations, uh, and then we do a max pooling uh, here, and we'd repeat that. And again, here we're again looping with uh, 256, 128, and 64 filters at each level in the same way that up here we'll have our base filters actually grow. As we start, we pass in the number of base filters, and every time we double the base filters. So. Um, this is a, a, a just a loop going through these uh, filters and builds the model. So here's your job is that this is where you're going to want to, it's the only place you really have to change code is here. There are three different models. There's the encoder decoder model, the simple unit model, and then the complete unit model. So you want to run this code. So again, I'm going to switch over to this view. So here I can run this and again, just like code, and I can run this uh, code. Um, oh, I'm running it in another window, so it won't let me run it right now, but I could run that, run all this code. But again, when I get down here, uh, let's see where I'm defining my networks here in, in part three. So here's our three different network types. Uh, here, right now, I've 
this if I ran this code it would be running with the encoder decoder model and these other two models are commented out and then I'll want you to switch these around and run this with this unit model and see what results uh, here so you have to run this um, and then uh, run the fit and see and plot the the results the curves here learning curves and see and record those results and then again finally you'll want to run this again with um, this complete uh, unit model uh, for these. So run these three different models uh, here. So you'll be, you can uh, do this, uh, build the model. Um, these just define the callback functions that we've had before, uh, some uh, reducing the learning rate uh, as needed and early stopping stuff. So once you've done that, you'll run this fit uh, model uh, multiple times, and then you can look at the accuracy. This will display the, um, loss and accuracy like we've seen in other notebooks. Uh, so for your write-up, you've got to, again, um, do some research on encoder decoder models uh, here uh, in the unit model, and then uh, report your results from each of the models. So maybe make a table or a paragraph describing those and then analyze your results here. The final thing is this, if you have any suggestions uh, for improvements of this and how you might want to prove. Um, I was going to have you do some more, but I've decided to stop there so you can actually delete right up four. There isn't a right up four uh, in this uh, thing. So that's your uh, activity for this week. Let me know if you have any questions.